polish mops. I stick to the ones that I've always used. It's given me the result that I've needed over the years. However, I've always had this question in the back of my mind. Why are there so many different mops on the market? If I try another type, will that effectively change the way that my jewelry gets finished? Welcome back to the studio. My name is Yaku. Behind the camera, as per usual, is the Maya. We've reached out to Cousins which are usually the suppliers I buy from when it comes down to polish mops, who sent over a whole variety of different mops. Guys, check out the link in the description. Any supplier that supports education and is ready to get involved in something like this deserves our support as well. Wherever I've worked, it's been two stages. I'd start with a triple E or something like that on my first mop to get the basic scratches off, and then I'd move over to a final stage. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been doing it for all my career. However, we're gonna discuss four stages. So part of the question, why there are so many mops, becomes clearer because there are different stages and it does make a difference especially when you're working with platinum or gold we have a video on the process of how to prepare your piece how to get the best result before you get to the polishing process it is important not to expect any one of the stages to take care of the work that can be done on the bench first stage is the stage where we use the cutting compound on a rough mop it's going to take that rough ring or rough item you're working with and give it a gloss finish but it's not going to give you a final finish these are the mops i tried out for stage one over to the second stage the mop will be slightly softer in effect it's going to remove the scratches and i say scratches but i mean the finer scratches that's created by the cutting compound on the first mop is going to be removed by the second one these are the mops that i tried out We're moving into the territory of finishing our jewelry right now. These are the mops that I tried out for stage three. Stage four, the icing on the cake. This is the mop that I used for stage four. Let's touch lightly on compounds. With these mops, I also tried out the Menzerna range because they seem to do the job very well. You can order these in 150 gram sample bar versions from Cousins. I ordered the following four, the gray polish, the cutting compounds. This particular compound, a bit of a stickiness to it and it does great cutting. In fact, I will definitely be reordering this in a larger bar because it's the better one that I've used through all my life. All the different ones I've tried, this one takes the cake. It's quite rough, but then again, I'm not going from one step to the final step. So for my second stage, I went to blue, which is a medium cut compound. Pink compound was the third stage I went for. This particular compound was developed for stainless steel, but it can be used on precious metal. So it's a finishing compound, but it's not the final one. The final one I went for was the yellow compound. It is super fine. So you could end up with a pink, no problem, but the yellow one really takes it to the next level. On platinum, this is really where you're gonna see it, excuse the pun, shine. I've watched a few videos on this and people say that they use it for tool polish and the videos show great results and I've tried it on my tools. I find that if I have to take a piece and prepare it with sandpaper and then go on to the normal stitch mops for instance, it almost gives me a better result. With all the mops that we've got, the Sisal one to me is a little bit rugged for my personal workshop. Now you might have a different experience, you might be using it slightly different and then please, we're a community, comments is where I'd like to learn about exactly that. If you're working with things like platinum or hard metal and you're really looking to dig in, you're not going to have that soft resistance, you can have a really hard resistance which means you can press harder which means you're going to get a better result. I, I would definitely use them for platinum. It takes a longer time to polish. It's got a little bit more resistance in the metal itself. 
So I want to throw everything I can possibly throw at the platinum metal to be able to achieve my polish. I would use a stitch mop if it was appropriate for even silver. I would go for that as well. But it's a required mop definitely for using platinum. All right, now we've got the loose fold mop, more flexible, obviously, because they're not stitched. So they're softer when you're pressing jewelry into them. You're gonna get more of the surface around the area polished up because it has a little bit of sponginess to it when you're pressing it. So the dolly mops are small, tiny little versions of the big mops. It's the same material, you'd go through the same stages, but the purpose of the dolly mops and the one that I use it for, is you can take a bangle, move it over the dolly mop, put the relevant compound on it and do an inside polish without having to do all that work on the bench. So it speeds up the work for inside polishes out of a bangle. Essentially the width and the thinner ones as well, it has got to do with focus on the area where you want to work. Typically I would go for a width that's about that size. My jewelry pieces are about that size. I sometimes use the wider mops as well because they last sort of longer. You can work a little bit on this side and then work a little bit of that side. But typically the ones that I buy that are about that size deals with everything and it also works off exactly the way that I want it to work off. A wider mop will make more sense if you have a wider item. If it's a smaller item, the thinner mops make sense. You can use any one of them for any one of the purposes. The ones that are wider for bigger items will just make more sense and make it easier. I really haven't ever bought these mops because I've really never used these mops, but I can completely see where their purpose comes in. It deals with the side. The end of the mop, of the spindle, is where you're polishing. So where they come out in the end, what the purpose of that would be is if you've got, say for instance, a plate or something large that needs to come in from the side, that you have to have a big area that you can move around, where it would be impractical to move it in the front. You know how visually you've got a better view of it and you can do a really incredible polish if you're doing something like a plate inside big uh, goblets and that type of thing absolutely necessary when you're doing that kind of work and let's face it that kind of thing comes into your workshop from time to time If you're familiar with the ones that you're using on your on your desk they're just basically a larger format of that so you get the hard and you get the softer ones we've been sent ones that are hard but also have a different layer of cotton in the inside we've been sent ones that are softer which have a different layer on the inside so this is interesting and new if you have already dealt with the detail on the desk but perhaps it's a bigger item and you, you still have some areas where you'd like to get in between maybe scallops or something like that I would put the bristle brushes on, deal with that before I even start with the bigger mops. And they're going to get into areas because they are brushes that fold as soon as you give a bit of pressure. Now just like the other stages, we have stages with these as well. When you have something that's really needing a lot of resistance, the black bristle brushes are usually quite hard and then you're moving towards the softer ones which are typically the white ones. Same concept applies, different compounds on those. And I would use, like I say, I would use it to prep the jewelry before it gets onto the actual cloth mops. There are occasions where I'm only using the bristle brushes, for instance, with bracelets or delicate pieces. It doesn't have that big grip that a big mop with a big diameter will grab from you. So when I'm dealing with something like a, like a silver bracelet with stones in, like I've done this week past, I would actually use that bristle brush to deal with all the details. Just, just a reminder, this is the way that I run the things in my workshop. And the way that I run things in my workshop is the way that it works for me. And so there are some situations where what I'm talking about won't apply. Remember, I'm just trying to give you a basic idea on polishing mops. And again, comment section. This is a community. Let's hear what you do. The side of the mop, so if I'm looking at the mop from the front, how you would approach a mop, usually the side where the spindle is, is where I'm using it. And I'm using the fact that it's flat and it has a lot of resistance to my advantage. If you're working on a very uh, a flat surface on a ring, for instance, you can do all the polishing you want over there. And what a big mop will do, or a, or a loose fold mop will do, is it's folding over the ring itself. Thus your corners over here will slightly be affected when you're polishing. 
with a felt mop, if you take the ring and you stick it against the side while it's spinning and you're moving it around, that mop's resistance means that you get a flat polish just on the flat surface over there. I use two of them. The first stage on the one side, I'll remove the mop, turn it around, and then have the second stage on this side, and the third and the fourth stage. I mark the mops in the same way. So I can refine the flat polish and it comes out like a mirror, especially when you're working with really, really flat pendants, like a disc pendant, for instance, if you want the best polish on a disc pendant. Let's move into the next segment, which is the inside ring polishing cones. Get the felt mops, which I'll use for the beginning stages of the inside ring polishing. And then I'll move over to the cotton for the last two stages. But there's another one that has an extra little disc on the side. You can also do your bangle inside polishes, and you can use the flat side to do a quick little touch up on the outside of a ring as well. So for the jobbing jeweler, this is a great idea. I usually do my inside ring polishes on the disc. That gives me a, a really high finish consistency that these deliver I can bring the, the ring right up to the point where it locks and at that point with the right compound it's going to give you an overall consistency on the inside which just makes the piece of jewelry look better the inside polishing mops to me the ring every part of it has to be as, as good as I can get it the, the very first mop that I would really reorder, which I haven't ordered before the first stage yellow mops, that fluff that it kicks up. These ones don't kick up any fluff whatsoever. It's really stiff, which means that it really gives you a good result on the first phase. I'm going to be placing these in my basket next time I place an order because these, these are here to stay in my workshop. Yeah. Second one that I'll be placing back into my order, the Rhino bristle brush. It has a cotton insert in the inside and the efficiency of this brush beats the efficiency of the previous bristle brushes that I had. So obviously it's a no brainer in my world. The stage four swans down mop, the really, really soft material. I've never really used it because I've done two stages of polishing all my life. The fourth stage has never made sense to me up until this video and us looking through these mops. I now know what the final the very final mop does with a really fine polish and especially on my platinum. This mop takes the final finish to the next level. Without a doubt I'm going to be reordering that one. And maybe not in that width but the actual mop itself. Shout out to Cousins for sending us these mops to try out. Their link is in the description. They sell some juicy things. Yeah, they, <laughs> they do. do. Tool yeah, suppliers. Do. I hope that answered some of the questions that you had with regarding to mops. It certainly did for myself and Demaya also learned a lot. We've learned a lot. If you haven't done so yet, like, subscribe, bell icon. We will see you in the next video. It is time for me to get back to the bench. Till next time. Bye.